Hey everybody, welcome to Hook and Hunt TV Facebook Live tonight, and we are going to be talking about swim jigs, how to make them, and I'm also going to be uh, showing you a technique, uh, how I throw a swim jig, as well as the rod that I built to throw swim jigs. So, we'll get into it a little bit. Um, what I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight before we, before we start on it, is when do I throw a swim jig? Well, first and foremost, I like to for grass to be around. It doesn't have to be, um, but I like throwing a swim jig around a lot of grass. I also like throwing them on a calm day. Comparative was real windy. Maybe I'd be throwing a spinner bait or something like that. But when it's calm, sometimes things are a little bit tougher or I'm um, fishing water where there's a lot of grass, whether it be thick grass and I can fish the edges or especially scattered grass, lily pads, things like that. That doesn't mean you can't throw them around lay downs. Um, and beaver piles and things like that. I like doing that as well, but grass has always been my favorite uh, place to throw them. So let's actually look at the anatomy of a swim jig, how we're going to, and Moxie's joining us. Hey, Moxie, good to see you. Why don't you lay down there? That's a good girl. Yeah, she's so good. All right, so let's look at the anatomy of a swim jig. Compared to a flipping jig or one we would use in heavy cover, the eye is going to be straight on with the head, okay? The weed guard is going to be a little bit thinner, all right, and you're still going to have a big hook if you want one, and this one's got a hook keeper. The jig head we're using tonight is a Lure Parts Online uh, Super Stroker Swim Jig. This is a brand new one I'm out with. Now, um, they're made with great hooks, but I'm going to tell you something we haven't covered before, and that uh, Lure Parts Online also has a custom department. So I had these ones custom made, so you get a slip like that depending on what you want, and I actually had these made with VMC hooks, with a 40 VMC hook on there, because that's just my hook of choice. You can have them made with anyone, or you can use the great quality hooks that they come with. I'm just letting you know that an option is to have them made with VMC hooks. So I make my swim jigs a little bit different, and we're going to make more of a shad colored uh, one tonight. And so the skirt color that I'm going to be using is actually called um, uh, Blue Ghost, I think as it is, and I have it over here. Uh, Here's your item number, and I'll read it off to you. Blue Ghost, I have a setup here, all my stuff, and Blue Ghost is 1687-104. So that is a skirt color that I'm going to be using. But before I put that on, I like putting on these little jig tail trailers, and the one I'm going to use for this one is your item number uh, 1600J, and the color is 051, and it's a blue illusion. This goes along really good and actually adds a lot of action to your swim jig and I'll show you when you make that so the first thing I'm going to do is when I make it is if you guys saw the jig video last week what I did is I always take my hook and I bend it up just a little bit not a lot I want to change that hook angle from straight on with the, just up a little bit that gives me more of an angle what that does is when you go to set the hook if the jig happens to roll over it's still going to catch farther back in the fish's face I've got a bigger opening right there and it works really really good then what i'm gonna do is just fan out that thinner weed guard a little bit and on a swim jig i press them down a little bit i don't want a whole lot of protection on there we're flipping jig i would pull them out and fan them out i just want them covering the tip a little bit okay and that's exactly how i want it now very little pressure and i'll be able to set the hook so okay so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wet around the collar here just like that and i'm gonna take these swim tail trailers and I'm going to push it up over the hook just like so and then I'll push it up over the collar boom just like that that's what I want I like with the tails going up you can do it any way you want it um, I think it's slower when your tails are up just like I fish a grub the same way with the tail up at slower speeds you're still going to get a lot of action with that tail being up okay now I make sure that's wet again, and then we're going to slide the uh, we're going to slide the skirt over it. I like putting the scale part of the skirt up, just like so. So we're going to take this skirt and slide it up here like this, and then we're just going to push it up and over, just like so. I love these skirts because they hug so tight uh, on the jig. So that is basically. The first, that is your swim jig right there. Now you're going to have a whole lot of action with these skirts as it is. Um, then you have these jig tail trailers on the back here. The action in the water is fantastic. Now, the size I'm throwing is 3 8 The two common sizes 
for a swim jig are quarter ounce and three eighths. Here's why I like three eighths. I can cast it farther and then I can adjust the fall rate on it just like I do a regular jig. If you feel comfortable with quarter ounce, that's fine. I just like to keep my jig a little bit lower in the water column. Um, and if I don't want it riding high, I'm going to throw a three eighths. So that's just my standard size. Yes, I will use a quarter from time to time, but most of the time it is three eighths. Now, so I'm going to switch off trailers. If I want a faster fall, Here's an example one I built here. I'm going to put on a smaller tra trailer. This is a great little craw trailer. Uh, this is a Shields Finesse Craw. And uh, I've got this. And I always match the trailers with the skirt. That's got a lot of great little kick in action back there. When I want the jig to fall fast and I'm moving the bait pretty fast, I'm going to throw that. When I want the bait to fall slower, and if I'm using a craw trailer on the back, then I'm going to use uh, this Shields Swimming Craw. And again, now I've got action from everything, from the twin tail trailers, which will actually go underneath here when it's going into the side, and you've got the flapping of the craw. That's what I want. Now, in the spring, what I'm going to do, I want to throw a little bit bigger bait. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take the one we made here tonight, or one just like it, and I'm going to show you what I used. And I'm, we're also going to talk about the rod that we built with it. But here is going to be one of the baits that I'm going to throw. I like throwing white on cloudy days if I'm going to throw a swim jig. And so here's the one we built. And on the back of it, I put the Shield Swimmer on here. This is the Pro Swimmer. This has got a lot of action. It's got a real limp tail on there like that. The slightest bit of retrieve on that, and that tail is going to be moving. What I do is I cut off about an inch of that trailer and then slide it right up on that hook keeper, and it's not going anywhere. So in the spring, I like throwing a really, really big bait in most cases. I want a big bite. So that's going to be what I'm going to throw it on. Now, here's the rod. Uh, let's talk about the line first. So with the line that I throw in here, I throw a braided line on a swim jig almost all the time. And it's 30 pound suffix performance braid. If you're in really clear water and you're worried about that, you can throw fluorocarbon. We've talked about fluorocarbon before and I'll throw the 17 pound suffix Invisalign. If the water's not real clear and you still want to throw braid, but you're worried about the braid showing up, I've showed you that trick before with the marker, so I dye the last four or five feet with the permanent black marker, a black. And so that's my standard setup on that. Now the rod I built for this. Again, this is a great blank for throwing a swim jig as well as a square bill and also like a topwater walking bait or a popper. What is it? This is an American Tackle Bushido blank that I built this rod on, and this is a 610 medium heavy fast. It's rated 12 to 20, which means you can throw 12 to 20 pound test on it. 30 pound braid is fine. I like a limber tip on this with a lot of backbone. Why? Because I can be extremely accurate throwing that jig in there. With the braided line, it's got no stretch. So the fast tip along with the good backbone and the braided line, it makes a perfect setup uh, for this. I finished it off uh, with good grips right here. And of course I have the microwave guide system on it. This is a great rod for this. I threw I threw a rod like this last year. I just built this one a couple months ago and you're going to see it when we throw a swim jig on the show uh, this year. I've got a 6-3 to 1 uh, American Tackle reel on here loaded up again with that 30 pound suffix performance braid. But that is what I throw. That is my swim bait uh, rod reel setup. Now when I'm throwing a swim jig obviously you're going to cast it out and you're going to reel it back in but there's something else that I like to do as well. Most of the time I'm just not reeling the bait in. After I make the cast out there a lot of times I'm kind of just pumping the rod a little bit as I'm reeling. So I'm making that bait go up, down, up, down or pulling it this way. I'm making it do something different. When I come maybe to the edge of some grass or a little sparse patch of grass, I drop it down into it and then continue the retrieve. I can bring it to the edge of branches, pop it up over it, let it fall down a little bit, and then continue the retrieve. I'm trying to make it obviously look like an injured bait fish. So if you do that, remember there, there is more than just a straight retrieve uh, to standard throw in a swim bait. Now, if you like the information that you heard so far tonight, please, please make sure that you share it on Facebook. And before we tell you a couple more things, I do want to make sure that you know that, as usual, this is brought to you by Real Grips. So if somebody makes a comment tonight or that you want a set of Real Grips, hey, just let me know and you could be a winner. Also, as usual, when we're talking about anything from Lure Parse Online, if you use this code, okay, that code right there, you're going to be able to get 10% off everything you order from Lure Parts Online. That's your rod components. That's everything. That's all your tackle. So make sure you use that. 
I'm going to go just show you real quickly um, a couple colors that I use. I don't get really, really hung up um, on a bunch of colors. Some of these are my flipping jigs. Here's the colors that I use the most. I use a black and blue a lot. Um, and if the and on cloudy days, then I'll use some form of a, of a white. Um, it's usually either a violet or that blue that we're making tonight. It's going to be one of those. I don't get real complicated uh, in my swim jig colors. Occasionally, if it's real clear water, I may throw a green pumpkin with the green pumpkin trailer. Just make something that's really subtle. I don't want to make a lot of flash, a lot of vibration. I just want them to be able to see it in really clear water. Then I'll drop down to a green pumpkin. But the two colors you saw tonight, um, black and blue, and uh, the other one that we call the Blue Ghost. I like that one a lot. Um, and if you haven't tried those little tails on the back of a swim jig before, do it. The action that it adds to the bait is absolutely incredible. Um, it'll give you a lot more, like I said, it'll give you a lot more action with the slightest retrieve. Make sure you put those tails up like that and you will. You'll have some incredible action on it. The trailers, again, as we talked about, there's not a whole lot that I vary either cross or swim bait occasionally occasionally if I've got really stained water and I still want to throw one around grass I may throw a twin tail grub on the back of it but that's about it a lot of times with the swim jig how your bite's going to be is a rod's going to load that's why I wanted that faster tip on that 610 so the rod's going to load you pull back with the stretch of that braided line and you're going to have a pretty positive hook set so I hope a lot of this stuff tonight that we went over um, is going to help you a little bit with your swim jigs. When you go to Lure Parts Online, there are so many different skirt colors and combinations. Again, that jig head for their swim jig is a super stroker swim jig. You're going to love it. And you guys who are building uh, swim jigs tonight, trust me on this one. It's absolutely fantastic head. Extremely well built. Great hook. And like I said, if you want to do custom stuff, say you have something that you really like. You, you have a hook that you really like or you have a color combo that you really like. Tell Lure Parts Online what it is, and you can custom stuff. Set, like we said in the last uh, episode, we were talking about jigs. The cool part about making stuff yourself is chances are you're going to make something that nobody else has. It's going to add to your confidence. And overall, the best tool you have for catching fish isn't even in your tackle box. It's up here. It's confidence. And if you can build baits for a fraction of the cost that you can buy them in a store and then be able to throw something out there that you have a lot of confidence in, you're going to end up catching more fish on it. I'm going to show you this code one more time. And that's Hook and Hunt 10. You go to Lure Parts Online. You put that in after your order and you will get 10% off. So I hope tonight that helped you. And I hope you got a little bit insight into swim jigs on not only how to fish them, but also on some different color combinations. It's fun to build your own stuff. It's, it's a blast. And on top of it, when you start catching some really big fish on it, just catch them fish at all on stuff you built. There's nothing better than that. Hey, till next time. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon.